welcome to our review on reflexes. So when we're considering what's happening inside our body, we have two types of response that could occur. First one, the voluntary response. So that's where you make that conscious decision to do something. So when you're sitting in class and you decide to have a conversation with your friends, that's a voluntary response. You've decided to speak. And then we've got the involuntary ones. So these are the ones that you don't consciously think about, but they occur anyway. So things like the pupil contracting in your eye when you look at a bright light. When we're talking about these reflex actions, they are involuntary responses. And because of that, they're not going through our brain. We're not actually contemplating what we're about to do before we do it. So as a result, they're much faster. So these ones take place in about 0.2 seconds. So the key place that we actually find reflex actions are used is to actually try to avoid danger or harm to the body. So to give you some examples in the table here, if you're exposed to bright sunshine, then what could happen is you could damage the retina in your eye. So to avoid that, your body's incredibly clever. And what it actually does is those muscles around your pupil will contract making the pupil smaller so less light will enter the eye. You've not had to think about that, your body just does it automatically, hence involuntary. If you cut your hand on broken glass, then your biceps will pull your arm away to prevent further damage happening. If sand's blowing into your eyes, then the muscles in your eyelids contract, making you blink to stop more sand getting in there. If you're exposed to a stressful situation like you know, GCSE exams that are coming, then you'll have more of the hormone adrenaline being released, which will end up increasing your heart rate and your blood glucose concentration to give you that fight or flight response to it. Word of advice, don't flee from your exams. OK, that's where you're actually going to go and have a good attempt at it. So if we consider what's actually going to happen in the reflex arc, I've given you a little flow chart at the top there that you need to know. So we start off with the stimulus which is detected by our receptor cells, they send an electrical impulse along the sensory neuron to the central nervous system. In our spinal cord, it passes through a relay neuron to a motor neuron, which carries that electrical signal to the effector, which then triggers the response. Remember, if the effector is a muscle, it will be contraction to make things move. If the effector is a gland, it will release some kind of a hormone to actually bring about the response elsewhere in the body. Now, you've got to know that reflex arc. And one of the best things you can actually do is to write it out on a piece of paper and then stick post-it notes or just a little bit of paper on a flap over the top of it. And then you can literally test yourself over and over again. And then when you think you've got it, just try writing it out from scratch without anything in front of you to double check you have it there. If they were to give you this as one of the longer answer questions, maybe a six marker, then just use that flowchart as your starting point, but turn it into sentences. So rather than just going stimulus, receptor cells, sensory neuron, just add in those joining words in a little bit more scientific detail. So the stimulus is detected by the receptor cells. They then send an electrical impulse down the sensory neuron, etc. So it's not asking you to memorize huge chunks of text at this point. If you know those key parts and what they actually do, you can put together that six mark answer really easily. Bottom left there, I've just given you the example of where we could see this. So one of their favorites is that you've got a candle flame or a little drawing pin that someone's going to stick their hand on. So the stimulus is obviously the heat there in our candle flame. Temperature receptor in the skin detects that generates the electrical impulse, which is going to travel down the sensory neuron to the spinal cord. It passes through the relay neuron to a motor neuron, back down to our bicep in that case, which is going to be contracting because that's our effector, which brings about the response. So our hand moves away from the flame. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now state what is meant by a reflex action. You can give examples of different reflex actions and you can also explain the difference between our reflex action and a voluntary action.